Okay, we've got our engine out of the car, so I wanted to just kind of give you a basic tech overview of what's going on here. It's actually uh, similar to the L15, if you saw my L15 tech inspection. Uh, the turbo, of course, is on the front. It bolts straight to the head. There's no exhaust manifold. There's like a single port coming out. This turbo is obviously a little bit bigger. Uh, I haven't pulled it apart yet to actually look at the diameter of the wheels, but trust me, it's bigger. Uh, but again, it's got the electronic wastegate on the front. The intake air tube wraps back over and comes over top of the engine. Uh, you have uh, the turbo feeding directly into a catalytic converter. In this particular instance, the O2 sensor on, the Elf, on this engine is actually after the turbo. On the new Accord, this O2 sensor is actually going to be in front of the turbo on the uh, turbine manifold of the uh, turbocharger. Now that's going to lead to an interesting problem when people are trying to uh, find out if they can use the KN ECU from the Accord on this. I'm not sure if that's going to cause a problem. I've been told that it, the engine actually does individual cylinder trim because it can read the exhaust gases before they go through the turbo. Of course, once they go through the turbo, they get pretty mixed up, plus it's a little farther downstream, so you can't do individual cylinder tr uh, trim quite the same way. Now, that may not really matter on this motor because this motor may have, you know, slightly looser emissions, you know, for Honda, that is, uh, because it's a performance-oriented engine as opposed to the Accord, which generally Honda runs at the, you know, absolute, you know, highest level or, or I should say, at the lowest level of output of emissions. So, uh, it may not need that kind of stuff. Now, uh, looking at it, there's uh, water cooling to the turbo, as long as uh, oil supply lines. Uh, you have a lot of, uh, you know, water tubes that are going around because there's actually a water uh, cooler for the transmission. I am, I'm assuming that it gets hot, uh, you know, in competition, uh, and that is just going to help, you know, with overall cooling as well as making the transmission behave more uh, evenly throughout its operation. By having the cooler on, they should be able to uh, keep the viscosity of the transmission oil more constant and it should shift the same all the time. Uh, it's interesting, not only does this uh, oil cooler cool the oil in the transmission, it also heats it with the water. Say for instance, you've got a car and you're not doing a lot of driving and stop and go traffic, the, the water temperature from the engine will actually bring the oil temp up on the transmission as well and probably uh, equalize its operation a little bit more. Uh, we actually pulled the engine off this because we were looking at what it would take to make an adapter plate to bolt this motor to some other transmissions, mostly the K-series transmission. Now, uh, there's going to be a very similar uh, version of this motor available in the Accord. It's almost the same. There's going to be some uh, critical differences. So there are some differences between this engine and the new Accord engine. One of the main differences is actually the rotating assembly. This has stronger rods, stronger pistons that are actually quite a bit more expensive. Uh, I think they have more of a dish design to the piston on this particular uh, uh, piston. Uh, looking at some of the photos and pictures of the parts, it looks like there's a really thick ring landing. So it actually should handle quite a bit more boost than what this thing is uh, currently operating at. The other thing is uh, the head. Now, uh, this particular head has VTEC only on the exhaust cam. One of the reasons for that is when you're running boost, getting more fuel and air into the engine isn't such a big problem, but getting it back out again does become a problem. So by having VTEC on the exhaust cam, they can open it up, let it flow more, a little, flow a little more freely, and uh, that actually helps create more boosts as well. Uh, one of the other things is it has VTC, which is those very old variable timing gears that sit on the end of the uh, camshafts. They have them on both the intake and the exhaust cam on this particular engine. Now the Accord actually uh, has a different turbo as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the O2 sensor is actually on the uh, other side. It's actually on the, the 
the turbo housing or turbine housing part of the turbo. So it's actually monitoring gases before they get mixed up by the turbo. Uh, this particular housing, I understand is made of a proprietary mixture or type of Inconel uh, alloy. And now Inc Inc excuse me, Inconel has excellent uh, insulating properties. So most of the uh, heat that's coming in the exhaust gases, instead of heating up the Inconel uh, housing, is actually used as energy to help spin the turbine wheel a little bit faster. Uh, I'll be curious to get my hands on one of those. I actually am going later on this week to go pick up a crate motor. I understand it is slightly different. It's based on the 2015 Type R motor that comes in the European Type R. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a comparison of those two. Uh, I haven't got a hold of one of the Accord turbos yet. As a matter of fact, that car was just released for sale a few days ago. It's going to take a little while for somebody to wreck one, for it to make it through the auction system, of course, make it into a salvage yard, and me get a hold of it. And whether or not I get a hold of the first one, I have no idea. It just kind of depends on how quickly people crash these things. This engine is extremely similar to the L15. In fact, it's like a bigger version of that engine. Let's compare the two engines together and see what they look like side by side. We'll start off by uh, comparing the turbo. So we'll look at this. You can see it's a little bit larger. Uh, it's got a little bit less plastic on it. The only real plastic is this uh, electronically controlled wastegate. Uh, the intake air tube is nice and round with smooth bends and comes back over top of the engine. And notice it's round rather than flattened out like the one is on the L15. Like the L15, there are water cooling lines as well as an oil fitting on top of it. Now the oil of course is for lubrication uh, and the water lines are for cooling. Uh, this is the Bloff valve. It's integrated into the housing. It's the same way on the L15 as well. See there's a lot more plastic going on here. This all bolts on to the face of the comp uh, compressor. Uh, you can see this is where the intake is. We have uh, the electronically controlled uh, wastegate. And of course the intake air tube is a little bit more molded and flat, kind of more compact. You can see how it's kind of uh, smashed down into what they call a cobra neck uh, for uh, the air tube. On top of that, you see here, uh, again, the blow off valve is integrated into the plastic uh, housing that bolts on top of the turbo. You see a whole lot of stuff going on. You can see right here there are a pile of vacuum lines and things like that. There's also this large device which I believe is a vapor recovery uh, tool of some sort, whether or not it's oil vapor or fuel vapor. I'm not really sure. I haven't really read up on this particular piece. Uh, and tucked right up here under this block of insulating foam, this is the high pressure fuel pump. Now. This happens to be regulated electronically. So fuel pressure can be bled off if it's uh, producing a little bit more, too much fuel pressure, which probably happens at higher RPMs, I'm guessing. Uh, also, depending on what the demand is for the engine, sometimes higher pressure is needed. Now, hopefully this uh, puts out quite a bit more than what Honda uses on its current tune. This probably is gonna wind up being the limiting factor on actually how much horsepower you can produce. Now, we know for a fact, we look at the L15 one, under a piece of insulation. It's also electronically regulated. Now we know from talking to uh, some other people who are doing tuning that there's quite a bit of headroom on this particular pump. So much so that they're able to boost the fuel pressure enough so they can actually run ethanol, a mixture of ethanol in this engine. Remember ethanol is, uh, there's a lot more ethanol is required to have the same amount of horsepower. So in order for you to be able to tune on ethanol, which means running at higher boosts without problem, without uh, fear of uh, uh, pre-detonation, you need to run a lot more ethanol. So the fact that this pump actually produces a lot more pressure than what's needed in order to drive these injectors, remember this is a direct injection in a motor, uh, the fact that it has a lot of headroom and can do extra allows us to make a lot more horsepower. Now I've seen figures from both uh, Honda and K-Tuner that's putting the horsepower and torque figures for these motors into the 300s. So that's really good news. Hopefully it's gonna be the same way on our K20C. So on the L15 V7, we have a similar plastic 
uh, intake manifold. This one actually sets off the engine just a little bit further and looks like it has pretty much straight runners. Now there's some shape and form to this particular one, a little more actually than on our K20C. Uh, I would imagine that uh, that has to do with uh, equalizing the flow to all the individual cylinders. Looking at the two motors, a lot of people who complained about how ugly this motor <laughs> was are going to complain about how ugly this motor is. There's a lot of plastic going on, a lot of tubes and hoses all over the place. They just aren't pretty motors. Now, uh, one of the things that, uh, obviously we care about this motor for engine swap purposes. Uh, some of the things that are going to be a problem are this intake air tube going over top and this wastegate. This actually makes the engine rather tall in front. Uh, when we've tried it in cars, this particular area was kind of interfering with everything. The solution may actually be to bring all this stuff over to the other side and come off that side of the motor with it. That would actually allow us to mount the, excuse me, mount the motor much higher. What's going to be interesting to see if this mechanical fuel pump is going to interfere with the hood as well. I think a lot of the stuff, because the, the hood is highest in the center, just going to be a matter of removing the hood skeleton to get that in there. But obviously, we want to be able to make mounts that allow people to bolt the motor straight in the car. But some people are going to, and unfortunately, it's going to hang kind of low. Some people are going to actually want uh, the engine to clear underneath the hood so that they can, you know, have kind of a stealth setup. So we'll have to explore and see how that's going to work out. Now, I just wanted had I wanted these side by side so you can see the size difference. As you can see, the platforms are pretty much equal, and the K20 motor is a much bigger, taller motor. Uh, it's also overall longer, whereas this motor fits nicely between the frame rails of a Honda Insight. This motor does not. This motor actually has quite a bit of the end of the transmission hanging, <coughs> hanging underneath the frame rail. It's going to make it difficult to put this into that car unless we change the transmission. Clearly, uh, these motors are going to wind up being cheaper, found in the salvage yards, and we're going to start work on engine swap kits for this particular motor. I'd also like to develop a transmission adapter plate so that you can use the older style uh, Accord and RSX transmissions on this particular one because I think that's going to be the limiting factor is how many transmissions we can get. With this particular engine, I can't wait till the Accord comes out. Right now, there are not very many Type R's out there and those engines are going to come at a premium. Obviously, with the introduction of the new K20C in the Accord, which is also a turbo motor, this motor is going to become a lot more available. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get a hold of one of those relatively quickly and start development on mounts for different engines there. Anyway, that kind of wraps up our tech inspection on this new K20C engine. Uh, I'll come back a little later on when I have the crate motor and uh, maybe add a little bit of more, excuse me, add a little more information to what we know about these engines. Uh, but right now, I'd like to try these into cars. If you want to tune into our next video, we're going to go ahead and take this motor, stick it in an EG, an EK, and a DC2, and see how well it fits.